Chemistry lecture number 40, Lewis structures of polyatomic ions and octet rule exceptions. The atoms in polyatomic ions are covalently bonded. Uh, in essence, a polyatomic ion is a molecule with a charge. And since polyatomic ions are molecules, we can draw their Lewis structures. The steps for drawing the Lewis structure of a polyatomic ion is the same for other molecules. Just remember to account for the extra electrons on the molecule when you count up the total number of valence electrons. Draw the Lewis structure of phosphate, PO4 with a negative 3 charge. Okay, um, phosphorus is a one phosphorus atom in group 5 contributing 5 electrons. Four oxygens, each contributing 6 valence electrons, gives me 24. And then the negative 3 that you see here means that there are 3 extra electrons. So the total number of electrons and valence electrons is going to be 5 plus 24 plus 3, which gives me 32. So here we go. We'll draw the central atom. And we'll surround it by the terminal atoms. Now we distribute these 32 electrons. So we go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. So that distributes all 32 electrons. So usually we put a box around it like that and show it as a negative chart. So notice that all the atoms here now have eight valence electrons. Draw the Lewis structure of nitrate, NO3 with a negative one charge. <clears throat> All right, one nitrogen contributing five valence electrons, three oxygens each contributing six valence electrons for 18, and the negative one means there's one electro, uh, extra electron. Total number of valence and extra electrons is five plus 18 plus one, which gives me uh, 24. All right, so we'll start here. All right, central atoms surrounded by the terminal atoms. We're distributing 24 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So that distributes all 24 electrons. But um, we have a problem here. Nitrogen only has two, four, six electrons around itself. Um, so what we want to do is we want to take two electrons and move them in between. So if we do that, and we're going to have this structure now. So it's going to look like this. All right, so now all the oxygens have eight electrons around them, and the nitrogen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it, so it's happy. And we didn't have to move these two electrons and put them in between. I could have moved these electrons here, or I could have had taken these two electrons and moved them right here. So I could have also drawn them in this way. Move this up a little bit. I could have also drawn it as... So instead of the double bond being on the left side, I could have put it on the right side. You'd have something like this. Okay, so that's with the double bond on the uh, left side instead of on the right side. <clears throat> or I could have moved these electrons in between. Instead of having the double bond on left side or right side, we could have put the double bond right here. So you'd have something that looks like this. Okay, so three different ways we could have uh, drawn this. Three different possible Lewis structures. And the actual structure of nitrate uh, that exists is the average of all three types of structures. And the pictures might give the impression that uh, the electrons are sort of jumping around that uh, you might think that the electrons jump here to give you that and then they jump you know here to give you that but the electrons really don't jump around in fact uh, the electron pairs don't jump in back and forth uh, rather the electrons are simultaneously spread out equally over all three bonding positions pretty weird huh 
Now single bonds are longer than double bonds. So in these pictures right here, um, if these things existed, uh, this bond right here would be longer than this double bond right here. And if this structure existed and if we measured the bond lengths in these, uh, this molecule, we would expect to have uh, two single bonds and then we'd find a, a shorter bond. But uh, experiments show that nitrate has three exactly equal bond lengths that are shorter than single bonds but longer than double bonds. And that means that nitrate doesn't have single bonds and double bonds, but a combination of the two. And to show the resonance structure of nitrate, um, all three Lewis diagrams are drawn, or a single structure with dotted lines is drawn. So here are the three possible structures. And then instead of drawing all three structures, we could draw this structure right here. So to indicate that um, the bonds are an average of single and double bonds. We draw these dotted lines right here. So it's not quite a double bond and it's not quite a single bond either. Now the two or more correct Lewis structures for a molecule are called resonance structures. And the actual structure that exists is an average of all the possible structures. So what is the structure of nitrate? Well, Neither one of these exists, but the average of all three exists to create one single structure. All right, so if you want to understand it more, you'll have to read up on molecular orbital theory. That's the best I can do to explain the strangeness of it. All right. <clears throat> Let's draw some more structures. Let's draw the Lewis structure of NH4. Now this ion has a uh, positive charge, so it's missing an electron. Uh, we subtract an electron and we figure out the total. So the positive charge means subtract an electron. So nitrogen contributes five electrons and the four hydrogens each contribute one electron. And then the positive charge means we subtract one electron. So the total number of electrons is eight. So here we go. Central atom surrounded by the terminal atoms. Eight electrons, two, four, six, eight, and we're done. And this has a positive charge, so we do that. Now, this ammonium ion is formed when an H plus ion attaches itself to the unshared electrons that are on NH3. <coughs> so, this hydrogen with a positive charge is attracted to these electrons right here. Now, a bond is formed when two atoms share a pair of electrons. If one atom contributes both electrons to the bond, we have a coordinate covalent bond. And in the above picture, nitrogen, this nitrogen right here, contributes both electrons, these two, to the uh, bond between itself and hydrogen ion. All right? So these two electrons contribute both electrons necessary to form a bond. And this bond that's formed has a special name. It's called a coordinate covalent bond. So. Um, now there are some molecules whose atoms don't follow the octet rule. Uh, you just learn that they're the exceptions. And the following Lewis structures are molecules that don't follow the rules, but they still exist. So here's NO2, and it has an unshared electron right here. And here's BCl3. Notice that B doesn't have uh, an octet. And here's nitrous oxide, unshared electron right down there. Here's ClO2, unshared electron right there. So NO2, NO, and ClO2 each have an unpaired electron on the central atom. And notice that not all the atoms on here have an octet. And yet these molecules still exist. Oh, those darn rule breakers. In some molecular compounds, the central atoms have more than eight valence electrons. And when an atom has more than eight valence electrons, it has an expanded octet. For example, PCl5 has five covalent bonds. Uh, thus, phosphorus will have 10 valence electrons. To draw molecules with expanded octets, uh, you follow the same procedure used when drawing polyatomic ions. Add up the valence electrons, distribute pairs of electrons between the central atom and the terminal atoms, Add electrons to the terminal atoms until each has an octet, and then place any remaining electrons on the central atom. So let's draw PCl5. One phosphorus contributing five electrons, chlorine, five chlorines contributing seven valence electrons each for 35. So the total number of electrons we have to distribute is 40. So here's our central atom. One, two, three, four, 
five chloranes. All right, so let's distribute these 40. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, and that's it. We're done. So what you should notice here is that phosphorus has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons around it now. All right, so let's try another one. Draw xenon tetrafluoride. All right, so one xenon, it's a group eight element. Noble gas, so it contributes eight electrons. Four fluorines, each contributing seven electrons, gives me 28. <clears throat> Excuse me, so the total number of electrons that we're gonna distribute are gonna be 36. So, here we go. Xenon, and I'm gonna put the fluorines on like the corner of a square. All right, here we go. Distributing 36, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. All right, so now we've distributed all 36 electrons. Notice that xenon now has 12 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 40, Lewis Structures of Polyatomic Ions and the Octet Rule.